It seems every single year that I teach, I always have to explain factoring to my students. And basically, they just have a hard time understanding what factoring is and why we need to go ahead and do it. So what I'm going to do in this video is break down factoring to its basic components and then expand upon that factoring into a couple different examples you can see um, up here. So the main idea about factoring that I want you to understand is all factoring is is rewriting an expression as a product. So here we have an expression which is just the number 6. And if I wanted to factor 6, I could just say, well, I could rewrite that as 2 times 3. That is fact that is the number 6 factored. And again, another way you can think about that is we know that 2 and 3 are what we call factors of 6. Why? Because they evenly divide. So 6 um, can be evenly divided into two, three times. And that's the whole idea of factoring, is that when you find the factors, they evenly divide into your expression. Now with numbers, it typically makes little sense. People are like, okay, I get it. What happens now when we throw in variables, that's where people get confused. So we have this expression here, x squared plus 5x. We want to do the same thing. We want to rewrite this expression as a product. And to understand what this is as a product might be a little confusing at first. So we want to kind of go back and understand this idea of multiplication and division and how they're related. If I can break 6 into 2 times 3, then I can find out like the factors by using division. So simply by taking something that I know divides into 6, let's say 2, and when I divide 2 into 6, I'm going to get 3. So that's what we're doing when we're looking to factoring out a term. We're finding something that they have in common, meaning something that evenly divides into both of our terms, and we are basically dividing that out, or a lot of times we'll just say factoring that out. So in this case, you can see that these both share an x. That means we can divide an x into both of these terms. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to divide out an x or divide both of these terms by x. So when I divide both these terms by x, I'm going to be left with a x plus 5. But again, like our whole goal is not to divide, right? Our whole goal is to rewrite this as a multiplication problem. So if I divide 2 into 6, get it 3 times, I can now rewrite this as 2 times 3, or I can rewrite this as x times x plus 5. So, and again, you can always check your work, and this is the great thing about factoring. You can always check your work with factoring because x times x is x squared, and x times 5 is going to be 5x. And you can just apply a little bit of distributive property. Okay? Now, what about if they don't have anything in common? For instance, in this example, we have 1 minus x squared. So, first thing I always look at this is when we're dealing with polynomials, I think it's always helpful to rewrite them in our standard form with descending powers. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange this to negative x squared plus 1. And a lot of students will forget that 1 is a positive, so we need to make sure we're writing a plus. Now, when we're doing factoring, if we can avoid having numbers in front um, of our very of our first term, we're going to want to do that. So I can divide out or factor out a negative 1 right? Because again, you could say that they always share a negative one. They always share a positive one. But when I factor out a negative one, basically dividing both terms by a negative, I now inside this parenthesis have a positive one in front of my x squared. That is going to allow me now to factor this. So now I want to basically think about, well, how, how can I rewrite this? You know, how can I find the factors? What multiplies to give me x squared minus 1? And hopefully up to, at this point, you recognize that this is a difference, uh, a difference of two squares. So therefore, I can rewrite this as x minus 1 times x plus 1. All right, and that is what we call one of our special products. And we can always check our work again by, again, applying distributive property. So this is, if you did not catch me with why this is x minus 1, x plus 1, I am going to show you by actually multiplying this out. So therefore, I have the negative. x times x is x squared. x times 1 is going to be a 1x or just x. Negative 1 times x is going to be a negative x. And negative 1 times 1 is going to be a negative 1. Now, the important thing about this difference of two squares, when you have the same expression, 1 minus 1 plus, you can see these middle terms, they add to 0. Or sometimes students will say cancel out. Well, we don't want to use cancel out, but they do add to 0x, which is just 0. So therefore, I'm now left with a negative x squared minus 1. And then if you wanted to distribute to your negative back, you could. And again, you would get back to our original expression. So you want to make sure you understand those special factoring techniques because when you see them, we want to apply them. And again, if you remember, that is just the a squared minus b squared is equal to a minus b times a plus b. 
But let's go ahead and expand upon this because what happens now when we have more than one term or two terms? What about when we have what we call a trinomial? Well, the main important thing that I want you to come away from this last example is that a binomial times a binomial produced a trinomial. Now, in this example, my middle term added to zero, so we didn't have to include it. But when you're trying to factor quadratic trinomials, we can always break them down into a product of two binomials. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set this up. I said, all right, I know that this can be rewritten as a product of two binomials. All of my quadratics can be rewritten as a product of two binomials. So now what I need to do is understand, well, the first two terms, x times x, gave me that first term here. So what do I need to multiply to give me an x squared? Well, again, we can use the x times x. And then look at the last term. The negative one times one is that's what gave me negative one over here. So the last two terms need to give me a negative four. Now, this brings up a little bit of an issue because there's multiple examples of what multiplies to give you negative four. You could do negative four times positive one. You could do negative one times positive four. You could do a negative two and a positive two, right? We have different options. The difference here is we look at this middle term. And what I want you to understand is if when you multiply the negative one times the x and the x times the one over here, those combine to give you this middle term. Now in this example, they added to zero. In this example, we want them to add to negative three. So I gotta think of the factors of negative four, the two numbers that multiply to give me negative four, just like we did over here, but then add to give me negative three. And hopefully, just by recognizing these factors, you can realize that's gonna be a negative four and a positive one. Because again, one times negative four is negative, negative four, and one plus negative four is going to be negative three. And again, let's just check our work because it's fun. So x times x is x squared. X times negative four is a negative four X. One times X is going to be a positive X. And one times X, and sorry, one times negative four is going to be a negative four. Now you can see we can combine our middle terms because they're like terms. So I get X squared minus three X minus four. So this idea of when you have a quadratic trinomial can always be broken down into a product of two binomials. So let's look at another example. Now this example, we have a four in front of our x squared. And like I talked about over here, we wanna get rid of any number that's in front. So typically, if you can factor something out or divide out a common term, then do that first. In this example, we can't do that. So we have to go back and rely on saying, all right, well, we know a quadratic trinomial can always be broken down into a product of two binomials. So I'm gonna go ahead and break that down into a product of two binomials. Now again, this one gets a little confusing because not only do we have a first term that could be, you know, a four X times X, we could do a two X times X, or sorry, two X times two X. We have multiple um, possibilities here, as well as the uh, possibilities for the three. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and start with something and kind of see how it works. So let's pretend we did a four X and an X. Now, if I wanted to multiply by three, right? I could put a three here and a plus one here. But again, like what I'm doing is I know that four X times X gives me four X squared and one times three gives me three, got it. However, remember these middle terms need to add to eight X. Well, four X times three, that's gonna give me a 12 and plus another X, that's not gonna give me to an eight X. Um, and even if I rearrange these, like if I change this to a three and this to a one, um, you can see that again, that's gonna give me a four and this would give me a plus three, which would give me a seven X, which is really close, but not going to be the same. So I'm gonna scrap the four X plus one and the X plus three, and I'm gonna try the two X and the two X. And then from this case, um, you can realize, well, if you do two X and two X, you're gonna have to, you only have one option, right? And that option is going to be three and plus one. Right? because there's really nothing else. I mean, it doesn't really matter if they're both two X, you can go either one, it's gonna be the exact same. And so now let's just check our work. Two X times two X is going to be a four X squared. Two X times six or three is going to be a positive six X. One times two X is gonna be a positive two X. And one times three is a positive three. And therefore, there you go, ladies and gentlemen, you now get a four X squared plus eight X plus three. And there's a lot of tips and tricks that we can go around this, but my main idea here is just to give you the general idea of factoring and how it applies from a number to a binomial to a trinomial. And now lastly, let's look at a polynomial with four terms. Now, when we're dealing with a polynomial four terms, um, again, the idea is the same. We need to write this expression as a product. Um, but we can't, if we have a common term, then we can always factor, always look to factor it out. It's not gonna be a difference of two squares because there's four terms here. 
We can't use the same technique as a trinomial because it has four terms, not three terms. So we have to look at a different technique. And one of the common techniques we can use is what we call grouping. Um, because basically, if we take four terms and we group it into two different terms, then we can look at using our factoring our common term out or looking also like a difference of two squares option. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna group the first two terms. Now you wanna be careful and not do this because when you do this, you just rewrote it as a multiplication problem. Well, you just can't randomly change it to a multiplication problem, okay? You have to, the multiplication problem has to make sense, right? You can't just say six is multiplied. You gotta say six is equal to two times three. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to group it, but I'm gonna group it by changing the subtraction problem to an addition problem. And you can do that. Look how I do it. So I'm gonna say these two terms are the first two terms, and then I'm going to add a negative 6x minus three. So now what I did is, it's the exact same expression, but now instead of a sub subtraction, I am adding this before. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna look at the common terms. So you wanna look at the um, common terms for each expression. And for each expression, you wanna say, what do they have in common that I can divide out or factor out? And in this first expression, you can see that they have a x squared in common. So I can divide out an x squared. So by dividing out an x squared from this first term, I'm going to get a 2x. Dividing out an x squared from x squared, that's gonna give me a positive one. Then I'm gonna add that over here. Now I wanna look at the same, um, same term. What can I factor out? Now, a quick little tip is when you're factoring out a term, you want it to get to be the same. And I'll explain, we'll look at this, why we want this to be the same soon. But so I wanna see what is gonna be the exact same value that I can divide out that will produce this two X plus one, and that will help it be factorable. And that number, it looks like it's going to be a negative three. So when I factor out a negative three, I'm gonna be left with a two X, right? Cause six, negative six X divided by three X is going to be two X, and that's gonna be a positive one. Now I want you to see is these two terms are exactly the same. So I know this gets a little confusing, but if you think about it, you have two different expressions. If they have something in common, you can divide that term out. So these two expressions, this expression and this expression, both have a 2x plus 1 in common. That means I can divide out the 2x plus 1 or factor it out. And by doing that, that's just going to leave me with a x squared and a negative 3. So x squared minus 3. But then, ladies and gentlemen, what I want you to see is I have now taken this expression and I have rewritten it as a product. And again, last but not least, we can always check our work. So let's go ahead and multiply this out. So I get a 2x cubed. 2x times negative 3, is, I'm sorry, let's do the x squared. x squared times 1 is going to be a positive x squared. 2x times negative 3 is going to be a negative 6x. And 1, and 1 times negative 3 is going to be a negative 3. And you can see... That is it. So there it goes, ladies and gentlemen. I know students have such a hard time with factoring, um, and I hope that by me working through these examples and really breaking down the idea of it's just writing an expression as a product, but there are different techniques that you're gonna want to use for whatever type of expression you have. So I hope this was helpful, and I have more examples in um, other playlists that I'll provide for you. See you on the next video. Cheers.